So at NavAir, I'm in propulsion and power on the internal flow modeling team. The project specifically I'm going to talk about is, is for the V-22 Osprey, uh, which is pictured on the right. And so we're, we're looking at the exhaust system of this aircraft from a reliability uh, um, aspect. So there's a lot of features in this aircraft at the, at the aft end that are designed to last for quite a bit longer than they currently do. And so the, it's, not a, it's not a flight safety, but the aircraft is not ready when the, when the warfighter needs it, and it's down for repairs a lot of the time. And so it's kind of a requirements definition problem that, that when the aircraft was designed, they weren't, it's a tilt rotor, it's a very complicated problem. So they weren't sure what the vibrational environment, what the aerodynamic environment this, this system was gonna be in so they, they told the designers to build it to a spec that it's way under what it experiences. So now we're trying to predict using our advanced tools what, what it actually experiences. And so then we can take those predictions and possibly help the contractor do a redesign or, or improvements so that we can keep the aircraft in the air more. The first step in any computational, I'm talking about computational fluid dynamics, the first step is to get a, a three-dimensional geometry of the problem. A lot of the things we're doing now is we'll actually take the parts off of the aircraft and do a laser scan. It's the simplest, fastest, cheapest way to just scan the geometry in and then we have a three-dimensional model as opposed to getting it uh, through the bureaucratic channels. And so then once we have that three-dimensional model, then we take it and we decide where do we care about the, where the air is flowing. And then we can build a three-dimensional mesh or grid and, and that, that's where we're going to find our high, that's where we want to find our high fidelity flow simulation results that are accurate, validated, and reliable. One of the ultimate goals is not only do we want to look at the, the forces and the pressures from the aerodynamic forces on the inside the exhaust system, but then we're actually passing that to the original equipment manufacturer of the part, and they're doing a structural redesign as part of the, as part of the program, which we think is a, is a very interesting uh, interaction. They're not, it's kind of changing the status quo. They're not quite used to the government saying, we're going to do this and we're going to give it to you. They're used to having the, all of the work. And so it helps push them to do better and it helps push us to do better. To date, this is one of the most, or is the most complex comprehensive model of the V-22 exhaust system that's ever been built. Uh, we, we took a, a building block approach to this problem. We, we assembled it incrementally, piece by piece. There's um, you know, 20 to 40 different components in the exhaust system. By assembling it piece by piece, you have a better understanding of how each affects what we're looking at. Because if you just start up with the full thing and you have an issue, you know, it's breaking here. Well, I have no idea where that's coming from. But if you add it piece by piece, you can see when that comes up. And so it really helps you understand the problem a lot better. And so the input star model will take the exhaust from the aircraft engine, uh, the external flow, different engine compartment flows. And we use that with the 3D geometry I mentioned to build a three-dimensional flow model of the, of the aircraft exhaust system. So can you play the video? So hopefully it works. So what we're looking at here is a a computational fluid dynamic simulation of the exhaust system with the geometry removed. So all, all we're looking at is what you call a slice or a cut. So it's just a horizontal plane through the exhaust system and then we can see how the air is moving. And so this is colored by the fluid velocity. So red and purple are higher, higher velocity flow and then the blue and green are slower, slower, lower speed flow. And so then the engine exhaust is down here and the air is moving, propagating downstream through the exhaust system here. These things here you can see is where it's pulling in external air and cooling. And then there's surfaces that, that are not pictured in this, in this visualization that kind of bisect the, the flow field. And that's what we care about. That's where, that's where it's breaking. And so we can use this simulation. There's a lot of turbulent structures in the flow field, a lot of unsteadiness. And so by using, if, if you use last generation tools, some things that are used in design of aircraft because of, they need a rapid hundreds of designs in a very short time period, you can't, you can't get this fidelity in the turnaround time. But when you're looking retroactively, we can, I mean, this simulation here that I played took um, about three days on 4,000 processors on a, a supercomputer. So it's an extremely complicated, computationally expensive simulation that you can really utilize. And these are not necessarily arbitrary cuts, but you can interrogate the entire three-dimensional flow field to save all the data. So it's as if we have an infinite number of sensors that we trust it's validated so we can put them anywhere and get the data we need.